Your garden city concept, uh, vegetation, park space, open space, uh, the urban habitat, as they call it at CTBUH, uh, kind of writ large. How do we take this from the project scale to the city scale? Mm. I guess in, in this um, new book of ours, Garden City, Make a City, we, we distill the, um, the ideas and the strategies behind our built and unbuilt works uh, over the last 22 years. And we have been addressing, we realized that we've been addressing high density, um, uh, high rise, high density solutions, basically. And what we find quite appalling is that all the mega cities, uh, the modern day mega cities, are still very much based on 20th century principles, very much based on um, Le Corbusier's uh, proposals for Paris, you know. Hmm. And I think um, that has, in some ways, isolated the, uh, the man on the street and uh, developments are marooned by vehicular traffic. Mm -hmm. And I think that has spread across uh, all of the world and that uh, we think it is actually important for us to consider a shift in paradigm, to mm -hmm. rethink a 21st century city. Why don't those 20th century paradigms work for 21st century megacities exactly? Mm -hmm. The reality of our cities now is that they are fairly large. And I think um, we have, um, the last count, I think we have something like 28 mega cities in the world, and um, more than half of them are actually in Asia, and they are only been around in the uh, last two decades. Um, 50 years ago, we only had two. We had Tokyo and New York, hmm. and uh, since then, it's kind of exploded, and it's continued to go explode into more numbers as we see more urbanization taking place in, in, in South America, Africa, and Asia. And I think the, the problem really now is, is how to address these new dimensions. Um, the um, 21st century proposals were, by Le Corbusier, for instance, were based on 3 million people. And this has been uh, joylessly extrapolated um, 3, 4, 10, over, you know, more than 10 times in some cities. And I think this solution doesn't work because they um, are very extensive horizontally. And I think they take up so much land that could be used for um, nature, farming, and other things. But uh, instead, they are actually used uh, in, to buildings uh, for farming and, and mining. And I think this is where we, we need to reconsider how 21st century cities should really be uh, compact, vertical, and dense. Since so many of these mega cities, it seems like just they, they grow by agglomeration, you know, people are mm. moving, they, mm. they happen so quickly. Mm. I mean, Shenzhen, where we are right yeah. now, 1979 was fishermen villages, and, yeah. and now, yeah. 30 years later, it's mm. 13 million people. So what are the key points for cities that are growing fast today, mm. um, or that may start growing fast in five years for some uh, economic boom, or who knows what, that they should know when they're, when they're growing? What are the guiding principles that are most important mm for a megacity to, to form in a more sustainable yeah. way? I think there are many components to it, and I think uh, good governance is one thing, clean pol politics is the other thing. But from a city planning and from an architectural point of view, I think it's actually necessary to abandon the 20th century two-dimensional uh, concept of master plans, where they are basically ending up just like parcellation plans and you get parcels for sale, basically, mm -hmm. all divided up by roads for vehicles and automobiles. And I think it is time to think of the city as an integrated three-dimensional infrastructure and ecosystem. And I think we, we need to start thinking how we could actually cross-program and how we could have interconnected buildings and we could actually have um, new, in our terms, called multiple ground levels, where we elevate, uh, duplicate uh, ground levels into a higher level where we can actually provide alternative uh, people-centric routes and uh, social spaces for the people living in high density. Yeah. So and I think if we start thinking of it as a three-dimensional uh, city plan, and I think the cities can start to string, in fact, and to compact and be a lot more sustainable. So the garden city concept 
relies a lot on vegetation. Mm. How are you going to adapt that, or how should we adapt that to colder climates? Makes sense in, in tropical zones, of course, but how about in the temperate regions? Well, I, I think I get that question a lot. Sure. And, and I like to sort of ask you the question, do you have plants where you stay? I do. I have a couple of houseplants. Precisely. <laughs> and if you have plants, there's no reason why you can't uh, have them. I think the fact is, in, in tropics, we get um, sunshine, um, uh, tropical weather, good weather all year round, and plants really thrive very well. But in temperate zone, you really have uh, seasonal weather. But what you don't realize, seasonal weather brings about seasonal changes in vegetation. And that is so powerful in imagery to actually have the city and to have that kind of integrated landscaping that also changes with the season. Mm. And, I think, um, and I think it hasn't done before. And I think we, uh, CDBU uh, gave the winner last year. And uh, uh, for the high rise uh, uh, category to to a building in Europe mm -hmm. and uh, Bosco Vertical mm -hmm. and I think it actually does show it will work in 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 the temperate zone and I think you have to give it a um, a try and I think it's not give it a try it is working now mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot more possibilities in our opinion to consider buildings that are no longer a central core and sealed spaces but to consider as an open uh, architecture and have openable spaces that actually allow um, um, the building to actually transform between uh, the warmer weather to a colder weather and also to have the landscaping actually um, uh, have the seasonal qualities as well. So I think it's, it's very possible. Mm -hmm. I'm very positive about it. Mm -hmm. How about from an urban planning perspective, if we're adapting the city garden, garden city, uh, if we're adapting this garden city uh, philosophy to the city scale, how should park spaces in mm. temperate zones mm. best you know, use vegetation and, and open space to attract people year round? Mm. I think it actually is um, uh, possible to, I think you, I think there are things as um, the idea of uh, atriums, glass atriums and glass houses. And I think that concept can actually be um, uh, considered for um, uh, buildings and in city planning. And I think you can actually create um, a larger greenhouses um, that are openable in, in, in the warm weather and uh, in the warmer season, and that you can actually consider having uh, it closed in the uh, cooler uh, weather. And I think there is possibility to actually creating this in multiple ground levels again, in, in a higher density situation. And I think it is actually trying to, to replicate what you would actually have in ground levels at the moment in an elevated situation. And I think that's where the point is We for the 21st century. If we are to actually uh, accept uh, a higher density and a more compact city, we need to try and do what we, we, we succeed today in doing at one single level on ground level into uh, multiple ground levels. Hmm. And I think that is very possible. How do you convince developers and clients that it's worth their money to go with the Garden City project to consider all these uh, extra things beyond just their return on investment. Mm. Or I imagine it is a return on investment argument. How do you make that pitch? Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> uh, we had varying successes to it. Um, but um, it's a lot easier now with, uh, with, with uh, a track record. And I think one very good example really was with uh, one of our hotel projects in Singapore. And I think um, the fact that it actually has become such a darling with the uh, the media, it has immediately translated into very good uh, occupancy for the hotel. And uh, instead of uh, having a break even in uh, five to ten years, they broke even within five years. You know, and they're seeing very good, healthy uh, occupancy throughout the year. And that immediately, you know, you could actually see there are returns, and uh, they are really now considering other proposals that um, could also transform their business model.